you and Tiki. You know what I'm saying of what right. hap- of of what happened to all three of us as far as getting as far as getting terminated for you know for the camera and everything. So right. that's why I pretty much gravitated to you because I'm like, damn, everything this dude talking about happened to me. Like, right. So so yeah, man. So let's let's go to let's 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 go to the Orange Company. So that's. That's where you got your CDL training from, or you got your CDL prior to getting to the Orange Company? Well, me personally, um, I kind of was a little, I was a lot more strategic than the average Joe out there. So when I decided to, you know, get my CDL, I was like, you know what? Um, I, let me call a couple of these mega chairs. I call Swift. I call, you know, a couple of these people to get them to pay for my stuff with. I think Swift had told me they charged like eight or nine racks to get a CD. I'm like, nine racks? Oh, that seems like a little much. So I'm, <laughs> I'm a doobie to this industry, but you ain't going to play me. So I called around a couple local areas. I called, you know, uh, I called like three or four local schools in my area, and I found one with some good reviews. You know, uh, there was I got a good buy from them over the phone, and they wanted 5500 And at the time, I didn't have 5500 So this is how much I wanted my CDL. I got on my bike, right, a manual bike, not a motorcycle, and I did DoorDash and Uber Eats for 50 days straight. In my mind, my logic was if I make $100 a day for 55 days straight, that's 5500 okay. And I literally rode that bike every single day to get that CDO, and I was paying my CDO out of pocket. Okay, okay. Bro, like I said, this this is this is mirroring because when I when I, I when I did my research – I, you know, I, uh, I did a, I did a door unlock on a semi, I got in there. I talked to the young, you know, I talked to the lady. It was a female driver. She kind of got me inspired because I always, you know, I always wanted to drive trucks. I, I was just afraid because of the finance life was happening. I had a kid, I was married and everything. And, you know, but when I went to go and do this door unlock, and I, you know, of course I can unlock anything, but when I talked to, when I talked to the, 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 the female, you know, she was like about in her, I think she was like in her fifties or something like that. I was 40. Right. I was, I was in my forties at the time. So I was, you know, asking her questions, how she liked it, why she get into it, yada, 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 yada. And then on my way back home, I, I, I passed up Tri-C Trucking Academy right there on Euclid mm-hmm. Avenue. Never forget it. Drove down, dro- right. drove down the driveway, walked inside. Young lady was like, hey, how can I help you? I'm over here like, well, I'm, I'm interested in getting my CDLs. She took me for a tour around the building, took me outside right. on the, uh, on the uh, skills pad, and uh, right. brought, brought me back in there. She told me it was like, about fifty four ninety five and some change, so I pulled uh-huh. out. I pulled out the last credit card that was not matched out. That still had some. That still had a, a credit Man. on there. I slapped that. Bad, I slapped that bad boy on the table, and she was like, "You ready?" I was like, "Go ahead and do it right. before I change my mind." And then, boom, the rest is history, bro. I, I see, I see, your, I see your drive, man. Fifty-five days, a hundred dollars a day on a bike, door dashing. <laughs> Literally, that, and I see, like I did it. That's your drive right there, bro. Man, I'm I'm not playing out here, man. I, I I have to leave a legacy, and I have to create something for my family. I don't have any children right now. You know, me and my girlfriend, we're planning on doing it. I'm planning on making her my my wife one day and having you know children. But I'm 27, bro. By the time I get 30 years old, 35, I'm going to have some things, you know, in place to make sure that my kids don't got to worry about anything. To touch on the reason why I wanted to pay out of pocket is because I didn't want to be into debt and and with one of these mega chairs. That's what they do. They try to use that over your head. They say, okay, cool. We'll we'll pay for your training. And everyone is under this impression that everything is free. No, that's not free. You got to work for them for at least a year. And if you even decide to remotely leave, and seek another opportunity, you're going to have to pay that money back. Me, I said, okay, cool. If something happens, 
aka if I get fired, if I get terminated, if I decide to seek other opportunities that come along from this channel that I'm building, which ended up happening, I can leave. I don't owe nobody nothing on my own terms. That's why I did it that way. Okay, that's what's up, man. All right, so you you got in the Orange Company because, you know, the Orange Company is like the boot camp doing orientation. But you know, <laughs> right. we're we going to fast forward all that. You, you, you get into the Orange Company, and you, you got a regional position. You started, you, mm -hmm. you, you started driving, and then you decided to start making YouTube videos. Was you you was making right. YouTube videos prior to getting into trucking though, right? I was, yeah. I was making more of like educational, like you know. At the time, I didn't have like I didn't. It's not like I was in the industry for ten years, so it wasn't like I can like speak on certain things. I knew my place. Like I was, I was going to get on there and say, "Hey, this is how you become an owner operator." So at the time, I was only making content about what I knew, like how to pass your pre trip, how to do this or how to study, how to pick the right, you know, CDL school. That's what I was talking about mostly when I first began doing YouTube videos. So when when did you start seeing cracks in the in the walls between you and the Orange Company? Well, first of the four, most <laughs> like I don't have nothing against them. I'm not gonna ever you have never heard me say once that that company was a bad company. I've never, you know, say anything bad about that company but it's just come on now you're not gonna send people around the world and only give them 900 bucks a month or like or a week it's like most people say stuff like well you're you're a newbie you're a rookie well you you shouldn't expect more money than that well that's not true because i literally just got done working with a company that was paying me almost what two thousand dollars a week you know what i'm saying 15 16 700 dollars a week so that's very that's not true so at the time, I just started like seeing what mega carriers are about. You know what I'm saying? I started first, the first crack was it, to ask your question was a recruiter. You know what I'm saying? The recruiter sold me a dream, like they sold all of us a dream. You're gonna get a new truck, and we're gonna do this and that, and and yeah, that didn't add up. I, they ended up giving me a freaking 2016. I'm a little bit more, you know, wiser now. I, to be honest, I'm, I'm a rookie, and if I was a truck owner or owner operator or a company, I would never give a newbie or a rookie a new truck. But it's a principle. You don't lie to people to get them in and then when they're finally in, you you kind of renege. Like I, I didn't re appreciate that at all at all. So I, I called my recruiter. That's my first video that actually really went kind of like semi viral. It was, hey, they lied to me about my truck. And I don't think the company like that that much, right? And um the the second one was just the money. You know what I'm saying? The money it was just a lot of different things. We all know how these mega carriers operate. We're just a number to them. And I realized that all very, right. very quickly. All right. So so since you since you realized that and since you mentioned that, let me go ahead and talk to you like an old head, young man. <laughs> man. That you in in the in trucking, coming into trucking the new uh a new jack is always gonna get taught or get 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 told sweet tickets, wolf tickets. Exactly. They're going to bamboozle you. They're going to hoodwink you. That's that's what they do. The recruiter's job right. is 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 to get you in that seat at any cost, no matter what. That's what they do. They get some recruiters are honest. Other recruiters don't even work for the company. And then you got other recruiters that's on commission. So every person that they get in that seat, they get they they get a commission for. So the what's the right. be, what's the best way to get a new jack in that seat? Then by telling him everything he wants to know. Oh, the money's there. Oh, you are gonna get this. Oh, you are gonna drive all the way around the world. Oh, we are gonna put you in the 2020, 20, uh, right. uh, 2022. Oh, you go, you are you you'll be able to get home when you want. That's that's what they do. Right, right. That's what they do. But here's do. the thing, though. And that's all. That, that's, that's what go I ahead, be go ahead, my bad. That's what I be telling y'all, young jacks, when y'all get in here. Do the research, and I know. By me saying right. do the research without giving any context. So let me put it this way. Do the research by doing the numbers. Just like you said in your right. in your previous video 
about what you want out of trucking, you know, you want your creativity, you want your health, and you want your family. That's that. That's right. what you put down on your. That's what you put down on your on your notepad, and then right. That's when you start feeling out of these companies by you talking to them. Hey, what do you got for? What right. do you got for home time? Hey, what do you got for maybe terminals that got that got uh gyms in it? Uh, what what do you do? Do you guys accept uh accept creators there? You know what I'm saying? That's right. that's what I mean by doing your research. All right. So, um, on the other on the other thing you just said uh, about the money, I'm going to just tell you this: don't do it for the money because you're not going to make money. Right. When you go when you go out when when you go out with a trainer, you're going to at least get maybe about make well. I'm going by my experience. So I got $600 or $500. That's what I got. I got right. 500 I got $500 right. a week and then after taxes it was like it was like four something, bro. It was it was hard. All right, believe me, I was sending home $100 to my son and then try try to keep everything else in my pocket, but you're not gonna you, you're not right. gonna you're not gonna make no money. And if you're getting in it for the money, you're gonna be sorely disappointed like you were. Go ahead. Exactly. So I have a video. This is why I document everything so that if everyone tries to check check me or it's like hey, you wouldn't do this and that, it's already on there. I I did the research. I did the research. Mm -hmm. I have a video of me calling a recruiter. Mm -hmm. And ask them every question that you just asked me just now. Mm -hmm. How much you get paid? Um, like, what's this and that? Like, my thing is, word is bond. You know, companies lie. They lie. <laughs> even if they, even if you ask them all those questions, they're still going to lie to you. They're going to tell you you're going to be home every week, every week. That's that's the saying. That should be a slogan. That should be literally a trademark slogan for every mega carrier. Home every week. They want you to believe that. So when you finally get in there, they tell you something otherwise. But then when I I say something about it because I got a following, I should be allowed to speak whatever I want on my platform. It's mm -hmm. a problem. You know what I'm saying? I ask them all those questions. But I tucked it up. It's a part of the business. It's a part of the truck industry. I understand that. But the orange company, if your core value is integrity, you literally have this being your core value. It's plastered all over their freaking OCs then if you're lying to somebody, that's not so much integrity in my opinion. So if you are going to say this is your core value whatsoever, then you need to fix that from the bottom, the, the top, from the CEO to your recruiters, to the trainers, everyone in your organization needs to abide by integrity. And then you lying to get people in is not much integrity. See, they don't like me because I tell it how it is. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is. You lie. Mm -hmm. That's not integrity. Okay. And when I get, when I get, see, they get mad because, you know, a lot of people try to keep this stuff under wraps. It's perfectly fine. But when, when you start talking in front of people, 19,000 people, then people start getting mad. Because they start, their secret is coming out. Oh, uh, we need to get rid of him. They didn't fire me for filming. They fired me because of, I guess, me exposing them unintentionally. That's why they fired me. See, which that, perfectly fine. That's, that's going. That's going back on how I felt. Like, yeah, they tell me that they fired me because of the camera and everything. No, you you ain't fired me because of that. You fired me because of that bullshit that I put out there about the driver tech. That's why you fired me. You know, I said something. I said something about the driver tech and how the driver tech is a piece of shit. Exactly. And that's what y'all fired me for. All right, man. So, you know, without even, you know, everybody already. Oh, noise in the background. Uh, oh, go ahead. Everybody, everybody already, you know, know the story of everything that that you went through with uh, with the orange. Company. Right. But let me let me uh, right. let me let me tip on the rock, man. What what happened? How how did you end up getting? Uh, well, I I I could figure out how you got the rock in there, you know, but. You know, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna say this. I, I know that your fleet manager told you to drive on that, 
But bro, yeah. I'm I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you from experience that no, man. Your your common sense should have kicked in, and you should have been like, "Nah, let me go in and take this over to the uh, truck stop and have them to get it, you know, to get it unwedged." Because the people, the the fleet managers, the 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 DMs that's at the that's that's sitting down there behind the computer. If anything would have right. happened, if that rock would have fl- flew into another windshield and and did something. The first thing they're going to turn around and tell you, uh, well, um, that's his responsibility. Um, yeah, that, that, right. yeah, that, that's on that, that's on him. So, right. that conversation that you had with the fleet manager, I understand that was heated, but tell tell us about the, tell us uh the tense time that. You know, when, when you found out that you was uh, up and out of there. Perfect, my bad. So I was just saying, you know, people said it was like, I get a lot of comments, people saying, well, that's common sense. Well, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Common sense isn't always so common, especially for someone that doesn't know what they're doing. They get away. You all know, you know how it works. They right. want to give you a week of training. They think that you should know everything in that week. And, and hey, let me just say to the wolves. Okay. Right. Something told me not to do that. Right. And I, I agree with that. She listened to my intuition. But at the time, I was just thinking like, hey, man, this is the dispatcher. This is this person has my best interest in mind. I know better than that now. I was naive. But that's mm-hmm. why I always tell people, especially moving accordingly, moving forward, don't trust nobody. Your CDL is your CDL and no one else is. So that whole rock situation, this is why I always tell people, don't always believe what the video is what I'm showing on the video because it's so much that happened that day that I didn't even put in the video. YouTube is a business. I knew that that rock being in my tire was going to blow up. I knew it was going to make me money. I knew it was going to get a lot of attention. That rock fell out of the tire before I, I had ended up parking like in, um, in like a mall parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Just to, you know, call my dispatcher. I even called one of my um, trainers. I was, you know, asking for information. Like, how do I get this rock out of my tire? But anyways, that rock fell out of the tire before I even left the mall entrance. Okay. I never was on the freeway, and that rock was never going to go in nobody's window. Okay. I'm not in control of what other people think. If they want to think that, then, hey, the more drama, the better. Keep making the video views go up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's cats, not checkers. You feel me? Exactly. And when, you, uh, when you got that faithful phone call, now... Did did they did they bring you in or all this all all the uh determination and everything transpire over the phone? Man, what had happened was my airlines ended up breaking. I think I think you know, the truck that they gave me was a two thousand sixteen and check this out. It's a subscriber or a supporter, I don't call my supporter subscribers, but it's a supporter that literally, you know, hollered at me in my email was like, Hey brother, do you have this truck number? It was like eight six five so you know what I'm saying. He's like, you got this truck number. He was like, I literally quit that company because I kept nagging to them about fixing this truck, and they never fixed it. I'm like, bro, you don't got my truck. He literally named the truck I had, so they put that same truck that he quit that company for because it kept breaking down, and they gave it to me. Okay, that's neither here nor there. The airlines on the truck broke, so what they did was they sent me to. A mechanic, at, you know, one of their mechanics, and had me sit there for almost a, like a whole day, right? A whole day, wasting my time, didn't get paid for none of that. And then the dispatcher at the time, which he quit because I already quit. Somebody told me he quit, or one of the trainers told me he quit. You know, I still got, you know, people up in there about me. He quit. At the time, he didn't, he just literally called and fired me. I'm like, he's like, get this stuff off the truck and leave. I'm like, bro, do you, you do know I'm kind of far from my house right now. He pretty much said, I don't care. Get your stuff out the truck and leave after me sitting there. For-